All right, so right now I'm going to introduce Pythagoras. Okay, you've all seen it before, but basically what we have is a triangle which we're going to label the sides A, B, and C as you can see. Okay, that's very important to what we need to do. The first thing we're going to do to work out Pythagoras is we're going to use the rule A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, like we have right here. Now, what I'm going to do is substitute these numbers. For example, we'll make A equals 3. So we'll just do it equals 3. We'll make that one 4. All right. So the first thing we do is make 3 squared plus 4 squared and it equals that. Now, 3 squared is 9 plus 16 equals 25. It's the same thing. What we need to do here is that that C does not equal 25. So straight away, we need to square root that with that symbol. Okay, so here we have, because up here, we have C squared. Now we don't want C squared, we want C. So we need to sub, um, square root it. So we have 25, so the square root of 25 happens to be five centimeters. So this measurement here equals five centimeters. So nice and simple. Now, if we had to reverse that because you didn't know either A or B, and but we did know C, for example. So I'm just going to use the same number. So we had five, and we'll make B four. So first of all, we know we're looking for A squared. And we've got C take away B squared. So we have five squared minus four squared. So we know it's 25 minus 16 equals 9. Okay, but again, this is squared, so we have to do the opposite. So, so we have a squared. So the square root of a is the opposite, and we know that equals 3. So therefore, our answer is 3. All right, so here's another example. We have our triangle. We've got 7 on our a. We have 9 on our b. So what we need to do is write it up like so. 7 squared plus 9 squared equals. Okay, now when you do the math, this equals 130. How does that happen? Well, we've got 49 plus 81 equals 130. So we can't just leave it at 130 because C does not equal 130. Okay, so if you did this, you'd be wrong. So it's not that. All right, so what we need to do is square root 130. Why? Again, because it's squared. We just want C by itself. So we need to do the opposite of squared, which is square root. So 130 square root equals 11.4. So we know C is 11.4, and you'd have your answer. All right, so here's another example. So in this case, we know what C is, and we know what B is. We're going to actually look for A. All right, so we're going to set it up as we've seen. So we've got a squared equals 50 squared minus 40 squared. Okay, the big number has to go first. Okay, this represents the hypotenuse. Okay, so hypotenuse is always first when you're looking for A or looking for B. So if we continue, we know that 50 squared is... So we know 50 squared is 2,500, okay? 40 squared we know as 1,600, okay? When you take this away, we end up with 900. Now, obviously, we can't have 900, so we need to find the square root of 900, okay? And it equals 30. So we know that this measurement goes right here, and that is solved. All right, so we're going to find a question like this in your books where you have to find the question, find the error. So you do have to reverse um, what you're doing. So it's not just straightforward. Now, we know that this is a semicircle and we've got a triangle, but we are missing x. And without knowing x, we don't know what our radius is. So we need the radius to work out the circle, but we need the x to work out both. So what we're going to do is work out the, the x first. So the first thing we need to do, and I'm just going to do um, add all. So we've got c squared, because we know what c is. Take away a squared, because we know what a is over here. 
Okay, and that's going to equal b squared, which in this case is our x. Okay, so first thing, 5 squared minus 3 squared equals, and in this case, we're just going to write b squared again, and we write it 25 minus 9 equals 16. Now, we know it can't be 16. It has to be smaller than your hypotenuse. And that's your hypotenuse. So 16, we need to square root. Okay? So the square root of 16 in this case equals 4. So now we know our x equals 4. Alright, so when we know this is 4 here, we need to work our radius out. Our radius is half of our diameter. This 4 is your diameter. So we might just write that in. Diameter equals 4. So radius equals 2. So we'll just put that over here. So now we know our measurements. So I'm just going to delete this and keep going. So we've established our radius equals 2. Our x equals 4. So, sorry. Alright, so now what we need to do, we've established this is 4. Let's find the area for our triangle. So we've got our triangle, and we're going to say area equals, now if you remember, base times height divided by 2 gives you area. So in this case, we're going to say area equals 3 times 4 divided by 2, which obviously is 6. So the area for your triangle is 6 centimetres squared. Now, we have one half of our, our thing, so we're happy with that. Now we're going to move on with our circle. Now we've got a half circle. So our rule is pi r squared, but because it's half, we're going to divide by 2. So area equals pi r squared divided by 2, we'll give it to you. Now we're going to rewrite it with what we know. Pi times 2 squared, which is the same as saying pi times 4. Now when you put that in the calculator, you're going to have 12.28. We need to divide that by 2. It gives you 6.28. Um, okay, so we need to use that. Now what we do then, that gives you the area for your semicircle, but we need to add them. So you're going to have your triangle plus your semicircle to work it out. From there, so we have 6.28 plus 6.00. Add them up and you get your total area. That is our final answer, and that is correct.